thank you very much for participating to this uh, steam generating heat pump seminar. I'll start by saying the sustainable future is the is the goal uh, for everybody, and I think one important uh, path that we can choose is uh, electrification of it because electrification make electricity sustainable should come easier than particularly and in the backyard but it's a it's a path that uh, we all want to follow and electrification of it is an important factor to to use in the decarbonization of industry because we want to come from standard industry which are uh, emitting co2 to have a more uh, sustainable industry uh, in the future and um, heat pump is a major actor in this transition Heat pumps is an interesting technology because uh, if you think about a green future, often people will think about a green, like a, a house which is uh, self-sustainable and zero emission. And of course, we will use heat pump to heat uh, his space. And I want to to start with the bit of comparison between the residential heat pump and industrial heat pump because uh, when we speak about heat pump, I think most of the people we think about residential heat pump because it's no and it's used and uh, it's kind of reliable. People know it, they know it, it, it work. And I want to show a bit the difference between that and the industrial heat pump in general. Uh, let me stop as uh, showing just the market share in, in Switzerland. So you probably know about uh, that's the, the gray curve market share and uh, the, the black curve is what we call it adopters curve. When we see uh, if the market share is 50%, then half of the population will uh, use this technology. And for Switzerland, if you buy the technology when almost nobody is using the technology, you're an early adopter. If you, you're not the only one, if you, then early majority, late majority. And if you really don't want to change you the way you use technology, you what is called a laga. And in 2022 in Switzerland for the buildings, for the residential, we are more than 65%, which means that if you're buying this year a heat pump, you're in the late majority. So most of the people in Switzerland are buying heat pump for the way to heat their residential house. Uh, of course, it changed a lot last year, but the last four years, there is a big uh, difference, but that's where we are. Industrial, it's, an, it's another story because people using so sorry industry buying and implementing heat pumps are really only the innovative industries one of the reason is the government uh, had since many years promoted the usage of residential heat pump with some financial help some uh, advertisement and even recently there is a strong uh, regulation coming in some swiss canton when fossil fuel heating system will be banned. So the regulation is really strong and it's not the case for the industrial sector. So we hope if regulation and financial help will help like it helped for residential, it can change as well this curve for the industrial heat pump. But I have to say that this in Switzerland, we can see it in Europe as well. There is a lot of change since a, a few years now with the, the government and the uh, Swiss Federal Office of Energy uh, putting a lot of money into uh, research programs like uh, we had the uh, SECR, I know it's the SWIT, uh, Swiss Energy Research for Energy Transition, and I'm part of the TCAP CH with decarbonization, cooling and heating uh, with a big focus on industry. And um, SFOE as well funded the smaller project. Uh, particularly on heat pump, like uh, the one I spoke about, integration of steam generating heat pump, and as well the one led by Cordin on the high temperature heat pump in Switzerland, when there will be a really interesting uh, in place, so face to face workshop um, in two weeks, two or three weeks. And uh, we see a lot of um, change in the government with a lot of funding going into the research for heat, industrial heat pump. And this is as well from Energie Schweiz. It's in German, but you can probably understand a bit. There's, there's a lot of uh, funding help for industry who wants to install thermal pump, so a heat pump, and as well for more global pinch analysis. So 
a lot happened. So in terms of funding, the government is helping a lot. And we hope that this will translate into more and more implementation of industrial heat pump. When we look at the market, so like I say, Cordin um, wrote a lot about industrial heat pump, and you can see in one of his publication in 2018, he had a list of high temperature heat pump. Uh, it's in German because it was from his book, which is basically called High Temperature Heat Pump. And uh, in a publication he did a few years later, uh, we can already see there is a lot of uh, newcomers. So we can see that from the government, there is a lot of interest and from the market as well. So it's a, it's a really interesting technology, which is developing a lot in the last few years. Um, one factor, I think, which is really highly different when we try to compare residential heat pump and industrial heat pump. It's residential heat pump. There's basically two temperature. You have like floor heating, 35 degrees, or so you have radiator heating. And the heat source is as well. Well, no, it's uh, it's air to water heat pumps, then you have outside temperature that we know, or you, you can use ground source heat pump when you have a stable temperature through the years. It's absolutely not the case for industrial cases. And um, that's sometimes difficult to understand for, for even people working with heat pump then, then I want to say that high temperature heat pump is not the same as high temperature heat pump because there's so many different factors in terms of application, but in terms of construction, of the heat pump itself. And I want to, to showcase that by using this slide and by saying that different cycles and systems are optimal for different applications. So if we take just for standard industrial application, so, such as process heat or steam, which is the focus of today's seminar, uh, drying, uh, heating network, heat pumps will be used a lot in the future heating network systems. We have as well for heat pump, there's really different type of cycle we could use, like Starling cycle, reverse rate, which is only in gas um, state. We have, we can use different mixture of refrigerant inside the standard closed loop heat pump. We can use transcrit transcritical cycle, which is really interesting to reach high temperature. This is what I call a standard heat pump closed loop cycle, uh, mechanical vapor recompression or open loop cycle which is uh, really interesting in the case of steam. And uh, you can combine the last two cycles uh, to do what I call a heat pump combined cycle. And uh, we can see now there's so many variation depending on the application, you can choose a cycle and even in one cycle, you can choose different refrigerants. So this high variability make it really hard to design and really hard to standardize and which probably slow a lot the implementation spread in uh, in industry compared to residential. And of course, today I want to speak about the, the best cycle in, in my opinion for producing steam. So let's start by using a standard closed loop a heat pump cycle when we have, you probably know all, if you're part of this <laughs> seminar, if you're following me that you know, you know how it's working. So would you say it's kind of a standard heat pump, but because you are producing steam, you need a refrigerant which has a critical temperature high enough that you can use uh, um, standard closed loop cycle. And that's, that's already shrink the choices that you have in terms of refrigerant. Um, if you go full mechanical vapor recompression or as a called open loop, then if your heat source is higher than 100 degrees, you can evaporate the water and then you compress the water to the, the pressure you need for your process. If you have a heat source which is lower than 100 degrees, you will have to expand the water, but you can still evaporate the water using the heat source. But there's some limitation because compressor uh, cannot go too, on a too low pressure, which is related to the temperature. And uh, there is as well the combined cycle, which is exactly a combination of two. So you use a standard closed loop heat pump, maybe with a lower pressure to do the water and then to do the steam to produce the steam. And then when you have the steam, you can increase the, the pressure of the steam using this steam compressor. So combined cycle, uh, sometimes a good compromise where you can get rid of the limitation if the heat was a bit too low to have to go below atmospheric pressure to produce, to compress the steam. And you can as well uh, be more efficient than using a standard uh, closed loop system. So that was speaking about different cycles of heat pump. And there's as well the question of refrigerant. 
which I won't speak that much, but these different refrigerants have different critical temperatures, so it limits the temperature at which you can evaporate the water and deliver the steam. And there is as well different pressure, working pressure, which may be sometimes a safety issue. And as well in terms of toxicity and flammability, so each refrigerant are in the safety group category, some are flammable, some are toxic. Then there is the, a lot of um, regulation con concerning uh, GWP, sorry, greenhouse warming potential. So all the refrigerant will which cause uh, high uh, warming potential, if they are released in the atmosphere, they are, will be banned, they are already starting to be banned. And of course, in the future, there will be a big question about, uh, in the near future, about the TFA, because we have the new type of refrigerant, which is called HA4, and there's a lot of studies showing that if they are released in the atmosphere, they don't have a global warming potential. So for from this uh, side, they are really good, but they may, or uh, they are producing, it's a, still an open question, I think, uh, TFO, which is a tree fluoric acid, which can damage uh, water environment. So they, and I know in some country, like in, uh, in Germany, they really want to ban all um, gas which are producing TFA. So that's a, that's a lot of choices. Uh, and a lot of, lot of questions. Some companies uh, like um, Nestle did a presentation when they are, want to go full natural refrigerant, which is limit the selection of refrigerant. And often they are toxic like ammonia or they are flammable like using pentane or propane and butane. And I want to finish a bit with this uh, open question. So how is it? The availability of fitting heat pumps, like I say, each application have different optimal cycle and depending on the choice of the industry, they may limit the, the choice of refrigerant. So it's a, it's a lot of concept, a lot of uh, concept to think about when designing an industrial and steam generating heat pump. There is the fear of adoption because, like I say, only very innovative ind industries are implementing heat pumps. So there is a of course, it's, it's a risk often to use a new technology. There is still question because the amount of implemented heat pumps are limited. So there is question in terms of cost, lifetime, maintenance cost, reliability. And uh, I hope we will have an answer of these two new points, which is the knowledge and possibility. And that's the, one of the reasons uh, I organized this seminar because I got some questions from industry, which are first of all, surprised that steam generating heat pumps is a thing and after they want to know who is doing it and what's the, the state of the art intent of uh, research as well uh, but, uh, as a product and uh, there is the lack in my knowledge of implementation example where company can say oh, okay i'm interested in of steam generating heat pump can i see one running in an industry because it, otherwise i won't take the risk so some industry uh, are thinking like that that's all from my side.